If handstands are causing you pain and injuries, then this is for you. I've been there. Sprained wrists, tendinopathy, slap tears, torn rotator cuffs, and all from starting handstands in my mid 30s without adequate preparation for the intense demands on my body. And it could have been avoided. My coaches told me to practice six days a week, but that led to more injuries. Why? Because I wasn't taught about proper load management and preparation. Now at age 45, I've fixed my injuries. And in this video, I'll share the exercises I use for the wrists, elbows, and shoulders and core so that I can finally train handstands six days a week without pain. I'll also share how I manipulated the volume of my handstand workouts in the early days so that I could actually make progress without injuring myself. With what I'm about to share, you can fix the pain and injuries that you're dealing with and make real progress with your handstands this year. So 10 years ago, when I was 35, I decided that I wanted to learn handstands. And you know, handstands are one of those things that, well, at least for me, I was doing a lot of when I was a kid. I was, you know, jumping around with my friends and playing around with handstands, and I remember doing that. So I thought that I'd be able to handle it as well as I could when I was a kid. I did a few workshops with some really good coaches, and the consensus of the way that you train for a handstand seemed to be that you train six days a week doing five sets of face-to-wall handstands working towards a 60-second hold for all sets. So I started doing that, and very shortly after, I got a wrist injury in here, and I didn't know how to deal with it, so I just kept going until it got to a point where it was so bad that I couldn't put any weight on my hand for probably about six to nine months, I think. And my brother and some of my business partners at Unity Gym got the same injuries as well. It wasn't just me that got it. Then when that injury had been fixed and I resumed my handstand training, the next thing that happened that was a catastrophic injury was that I got a slap tear. And that was a like, you know, all handstand training was stopped for a period of time. I rehabilitated that and got back into my training. But at that point, it was very clear that I just wasn't strong enough for handstands. And when I spoke to some hand balancing experts that I've worked with, they all have had similar injuries. They've all had traumatic shoulder injuries and really bad wrist injuries. So it's pretty clear that our bodies aren't designed for doing handstands. You know, we're designed to stand on our feet. And if you just look at the, the size of the muscles in our legs compared to the size of the muscles in our arms, and then if you look at the thickness of our wrists compared to the thickness of our ankles, it's obvious why we're designed to stand on our legs. But that doesn't mean that you can't do handstands and it doesn't mean that you can't learn how to do them safely. The first two exercises for the wrists are wrist flexion and extension. So you just grab onto a set of dumbbells like this and for the wrist flexion, what we're gonna be doing is we wanna grip the dumbbells really firmly and lift the wrists up like this as far as they can go and then you curl your fingers in and you keep your forearms flat on the bench and then you try and open your fingers and then lower down like that. So we come up, curl in, go as far as you can, try to open the fingers, come back down and that's the end of a rep. And we're looking to do between eight and 15 repetitions with these. And then I like to pair these with wrist extension. So now it's just the opposite. So you start like this, curl your fingers in and then curl up like this, back down slowly and then open the fingers at the end so you get full range of motion. Generally speaking, you're about half as strong with this wrist extension as you are with the wrist flexion. And I like to use these at the end of my upper body strength training workouts. So when you're doing your upper body strength training, you can just throw three sets of these in and doing these two or three times a week is going to make a significant improvement in your wrist strength in a three to six month period. This one's called the first knuckle push-ups and I'll show you the full version and then I'll show you the regressed version. So full version is on your feet, posterior pelvic tilt, protracted shoulders, come up on the first knuckles and back down and you must keep the elbows completely straight. So what we're looking for is that you don't do that when you come up. It's very, very hard. It took me many years of work to be able to do that and what I did to get there was basically you start by having your hands back close to your knees like this with not a lot of weight on your hands. So you shift your weight back, lock the elbows out, protract the shoulders, and then you come up and down slowly. Up, 
down slowly and we're looking for 15 reps so you want to choose the difficulty so you'd make it a little bit harder by bringing your knees a bit further back that makes it a bit harder and then even harder is to have your uh, knees back here and then hardest of course on your feet and um, this is really good to do every single day as a warm-up to your handstands so you do two to three sets of this 15 reps of the version that you can do with your elbows locked straight and it's really going to strengthen those wrist flexors and then we pair it with knuckle push-ups so sorry with wrist push-ups so from here you come down like this push up back down slowly and what you're looking for here is to be able to straighten the elbows all the way which is quite challenging so for a lot of you you'll find that you can't get past here so your goal is really to be able to push all the way up and straighten those elbows and again we're looking for 15 reps so you make it easier by bringing your hands further back here and you make it harder by bringing your hands further out now those wrist push-ups and first knuckle push-ups have taken me years of work to be able to develop that strength and I wish I knew how important they are to alleviate wrist pain and you know make sure that you don't get injured when you're doing your handstands I wish I knew that back at the start of my journey so my recommendation is just really plan to be doing these things every day before your handstand practice for two to three sets you don't want to be thinking that you're going as hard as you possibly can on every single one of those workouts because that's just not how your body's going to adapt and it's as much of a warm-up as it is a strengthening exercise so you do it as a warm-up and also something that over time is going to build strength for you Now let's talk about what to do when your wrists are injured or your hand is injured and it's preventing you from being able to do handstands. Now for me, the most common injury that I've had is right here in my hand and the pain got so bad that I couldn't put any pressure on it. And later I aligned myself with an exceptional sports physiotherapist in America, you call them physical therapists. And he taught me that the only thing you can really do for it is to deload the area. And the way we do that is to compress the radius and ulna together by wrapping like this. So let me show you how you do that. So the first thing you do is you get this uh, squishy, stretchy tape. And the only thing that this is there for is to really to protect your arm, the hairs on your arm. And what you want to do is you want to put that over the wrist joint. So you can see that's gone over the joint of my wrist there. And then I'm going to pull this tight and that's just there to protect the hairs on my arms. And then we get the strong wrapping tape. So this is the stuff that doesn't have any give. And we want to start by putting it, up, it goes above the wrist joint. So you can see there, there's my wrist joint. So it's above the wrist joint. And you're going to put it just on top of the radius there. And then we pull really tight like this to compress the bones together. And then again, pull really tight here. And then again there. And it should be so tight that it's almost unbearable. But what you do is, of course, you check your capillary refill by compressing the fingernail here. And you want to see it go white. And then when you let go, you want to see the red come back within two seconds. And as long as you've got that two, less than two second capillary refill, then you're okay. And just by doing that, you, you wait, you'll see, when you put your weight on your hand, you'll be amazed at how much the pain in the hand there is gone. And the next thing that we can do is to use parallettes. Parallettes are really useful because they deload the wrist. So instead of having all that pressure going down into your hand there, when you're on a parallet, it basically puts your wrist into an alignment like this. So, if you're dealing with wrist pain and wrist injuries, you know, the combination of taping and using parallettes is something that can allow you to keep training with those injuries. So they're quite challenging to use though. So the way that I've, um, you know, the thing that's been the most challenging for me with parallettes when I was learning how to use them is how you get on them. So, because it's very different to just going in to the wall, you know, to do a face to wall handstand. So I'll show you what I do and what works for me. So basically I come in, and then I shift over to one side, so I've got the, that weight coming, actually, sorry, I've got to shift to this side. But then I put that hand on the parallel, shift over to that side, and then bring the other hand up. And then you're basically just doing your regular handstand. So it's all about, it's all about, you know, you get up, shift your weight onto that hand, 
and then quickly lift that other hand up like that. So you've got to kind of move your body, you know, from side to side. So that's not something that you can do if you're at the real beginner stage of handstands, like that would be quite dangerous if you were somebody that wasn't confident getting in and out of the wall. But of course, you know, you could still do it out here if you were doing a, a 60 degree face to wall handstand or a 45 degree or, you know, whatever progression you're working on. Now we're onto the shoulder and the shoulder for me is where I sustained my most traumatic injury on my handstand journey, which was a slap tear. I actually got a slap tear in both my shoulders doing calisthenics, but the worst one on the right shoulder was not doing handstands, it was working on the planche and then uh, about 14 months later I got one on the left side doing handstands, I couldn't believe it. But it taught me a lot about my body and it allowed me to level up my knowledge of how to train and how to help you guys as well. So what I want to share with you about the shoulder is there's, there's a lot to talk about here because the shoulder is the most complex joint in the body. It has the greatest range of movement. You know, you can, if you look at it compared to any other joint, it can move in greater ranges and it also has the potential to produce a, a lot of force. So there's a, there's a lot to think about with it. And the first thing I want to talk about is the outer unit muscles and the inner unit muscles. So we want to think of two different muscle systems. So the outer unit are these big muscles that you see. So the pecs, the biceps, triceps, the deltoids, the lats, the big muscles that are on the outer of the body that create movement, things like pushing movements and pulling movements. And then the inner unit is the deeper stabilization muscles like the rotator cuff and the scapular stabilizers. And these muscle systems work together to the inner unit, you know, holds everything together and makes sure that, that things are supported and, you know, your shoulder's not getting dislocated and the outer unit creates the movement. Now, I wish I understood how critical just maximum shoulder strength and muscle hypertrophy is for handstands. And I'll say this again, I haven't met a hand balancing specialist. And I say specialist here because I've met other hand balancers that aren't specialists, like, you know, the coach that I worked with for years, Roy Gold or, or Roy Goldschmidt. He's not a hand balancing specialist. He's a movement specialist or a movement master. But the hand balancing specialists that I've met, the people that are, they're all about hand balancing, they've all had really bad shoulder injuries. And they all say, I wish that I had a strength in my shoulders early on. So. Learn from everybody's mistakes and, and do what I'm about to tell you. When it comes to strengthening the outer unit of the shoulders, it's far more than of a bigger topic than what I'm gonna fit into this one video. But just think balance push and pull in the same workout. So you wanna do, you wanna balance horizontal pushing and pulling and you wanna balance vertical pushing and pulling. And if you wanna know how to do that, Honestly, the best thing to do would be to join the UMS online coaching, which is only $1.75 a day, and I can write programs for you that will build incredible strength through your whole body, but it'll really bulletproof your shoulders, and you won't have to work out how to do this. But if you're not willing to do that and you just wanna go it on your, uh, alone, I would recommend at least two days a week, two or three days a week, where you're doing bent arm strength training, which is pushing and pulling movements, where you balance push and pull in a one-to-one -one ratio. So for calisthenics, for beginners, we're thinking push-ups. For a little bit more advanced, we're thinking dips. And for beginners, we're thinking ring rows and a bit more advanced pull-ups. And for those of you that are going to a gym and using free weights, you, can, you don't have to think of beginner and advanced movements because you can just manipulate the intensity with the amount of weight you lift. So you just think of like dumbbell chest press or a barbell bench press, um, shoulder presses, dumbbell shoulder press, barbell shoulder press with things like pull-ups and bent over rows or lat pull-downs, things like that. So, and you, you really wanna be focusing on building as much strength and as much muscle as you can. Now, if you're thinking, I don't wanna be a bodybuilder, I don't wanna be jacked, I work my butt off to build muscle and I'm bigger than the average person but I wouldn't look big next to a bodybuilder. It's very, very hard to build that much muscle that you're gonna be somebody going, oh, I've got too much muscle. So my advice, try to build as much muscle as you can. It's going to really help you. Then when it comes to the inner unit, we're talking about rotator cuff exercises here. So there's lots and lots and lots of different rotator cuff exercises that you can do, but I like to start with the external rotation pattern and you start with exercises where the elbow is close to your hip and then you progress to exercises where the elbow is 
uh, not supported and up higher like this, okay? And then you can go to other exercises like the banded shoulder press and the foam roller wall run that really challenge the rotator cuff and you can do those a little bit later on. And then you can also use things like a body blade where you're you know, doing anti-stabilization exercise for the rotator cuff. So again, that's a topic that I'm not going to go deeper into in this video. What I will talk about now though, is exercises for the shoulders that are specific for handstands that are going to be very, very useful. And there's really two exercises here that I wanna share with you. The first, is a standing barbell overhead shrug. And then the second is active and passive hanging. And I'll talk to you about why these two exercises are so relevant to a handstand. First, when you are in a handstand, you are overhead shrugging. You're inverted and you're pushing your entire body weight away from the ground as hard as you can. So if you don't have an overhead shrug where you can push pretty much your own body weight, I'd say about 85 to 90% of your own body weight with an overhead shrug, then it's going, you're going to struggle with being able to produce the force that's required to hold a good handstand because you're going to be inverted in a handstand and you're pushing almost that same weight. You're probably pushing, I guess, maybe 80% of your body weight because you're not, you know, you're obviously not pushing the weight of your arms. And so if you can't do, let's say, 80% of your own body weight in an overhead shrug like that and hold it, then that's going to be something that can be problematic. So that's one exercise. You, you want to develop that strength in the overhead shrug with a barbell. The second exercise, the active and passive hanging, it's basically the antagonistic movement to the overhead shrug. And we always want to develop our body with antagonistic strength. So that basically means opposing muscle groups or opposing movements. So if you strengthen a push movement, you also want to strengthen a pull movement. And there's multiple different ways that you can develop your active and passive hanging, but I've got a really, really good video on that. So I'll link that at the end of this video so you can learn all about how you can develop active and passive hanging strength. And if you do those two things, then that's really going to boost your shoulder strength so that you hopefully won't get injured in your shoulders. Now, I recommend in the very least, because the, the, the shrugs are something that you would do it's not something like once I got to a certain level of strength, I don't do shrugs anymore because I, I get that strength development in my handstands. But if you don't have that strength yet, then that's something that you'd want to include in your strength training. The active and passive hanging and passive hanging is something that I do every day as a warm up for my handstands for several reasons. During the handstand training, you're doing that shrug movement. So you are pushing your hands away from your body in an inverted position and really developing strength in those upper traps. So I wanna balance that by developing strength in the depression movement, the pull pattern that opposes the push for the handstand. So I like to do that as my warm up to the handstand. The other reason why I like to do it as a warm up is because it stretches you out into the handstand position. So when you get your arms up above your head and you're hanging on a bar, you're getting this beautiful stretch through your lats and your shoulders and through your whole spine and you're feeling the position of the handstand. So you get to feel that line of the handstand when your body's being pulled into it rather than you having to push yourself into it. So that's why I like to do, personally I do three sets of hanging as a warm up for every single handstand session. And the video that I'm gonna share with you at the end, that shows you the beginner progressions for handstands and then there's another, uh, sorry, for hanging. And then I've got another video for the more advanced progressions for hanging where you start doing uh, one arm versions. And that's also really, really good for all your other calisthenic strength as well. For the core, we have two really nice exercises and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I can't say that I've had any injuries due to a weak core, but that said, the alignment of your handstand is going to be a big factor in whether you get injured or not. Like if you've got a poor aligned handstand and you're putting too much strain in your wrists or your shoulders because you're not stacking your weight properly and the core plays a really big role in that. So the two exercises that I've found to be really useful, uh, this one is called the back body line and you just grab yourself a dowel rod like this, bring your feet and your hand and the dowel rod together so that you can feel your abs engaged and your lower back is pushed firmly into the ground. And then you maintain that posture in the core but bring your hands and feet down as close as you can to the ground and then you hold for 60 seconds. So what you'll do is, if you're not strong enough to hold for 60 seconds, if your lower back starts to come off the ground, then you'll actually not go that far to the ground. So you'll just go here. But you go to the point where you can hold for 60 seconds with your core engaged, back pushed into the ground. And when you can go all the way down like this, 
with your legs out here and do it, you put a two and a half kilo weight on here. And then the other exercise, this one's called the front body line. And this one's really, really good because it is actually the cues that you use in a handstand. So you grab onto your downward like this, you have your hands at handstand width apart, and you're going to rest your nose on the ground. So sorry about the muffled speech here. Legs together, squeeze together. We're going to tense the butt, suck the stomach in. So you can't really see it from that angle, but there's a gap now between my stomach and the ground. So I'm not lifting my hips off the ground. I'm actually pushing my hips into the ground and tensing my butt, and then I'm drawing my stomach off the ground. Keeping the nose touching the ground, I lift my hands up one inch, and then you hold for 60 seconds. It's very, very hard. And when you start doing this for the first time, it's likely you won't be able to do all of that and lift your hands off the ground. So if that's the case, you just leave your hands on the ground and you just focus on squeezing your legs together, tensing your butt, pushing your pelvis into the floor, and then sucking your stomach off the floor. And you hold that for 60 seconds. And then when you can do that for three sets, then you start working on lifting your hands up. And to develop good core strength and good alignment for your handstands, do three sets of those two exercises back to back. So you just go from one to the other for three sets. Um, every day of the week when you're doing your handstands. Now let's talk about how often you do your handstand training. Because now at age 45, so 10 years after I started this whole handstand journey, I am doing six days a week of five sets of handstand training. And my body can totally handle that. But there was a time when I absolutely couldn't. So here's what worked for me. The first thing is that if you are injured, but you can still do some hand balancing, then I recommend doing it every other day and only doing two or three sets and never doing more than 15 second holds. And make sure that you do all of your sets for the same hold time. Because if you're doing a longer hold time at the start in the first set and a shorter hold time at the end, it means that you're going to failure or close to failure and you do not wanna be doing that, especially when your body is being conditioned and you're trying to build up this strength so that you're not getting injured all the time, okay? Now the next step from there would be that you feel that you can start doing handstands every day. And I still recommend only doing two or three sets for no more than 15 seconds. So why am I saying this? Because you're basically moderating the volume to be so low that you're still getting some exposure to the handstand. So you are still developing some of the skill and some of the strength but you're able to do this without making your injuries worse. And then it's just about using progressive overload to gradually increase you know, how much you can do. And the first thing that I would look at doing is I would look at adding in extra sets. So you look at going from two sets to three sets, then from three to four, and then from four to five. And you can even stagger the way you do that. So you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where you start doing four sets, and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, where, you, where you're still only doing two sets. And then you bring up all your five or six days a week to doing three sets or four sets. And you work like that until you get up to five sets. And once you're doing your five sets, you start looking at increasing the hold time. And I highly recommend that you only increase the hold time when you can do all of your five or six sets at the same hold time for the whole workout. And then when you can do all five sets at let's call it 15 seconds, then the next workout you try 16 or 17 seconds, that's it. You only go up one or two seconds. And only when you can do the same hold time for all of your five sets do you then go up again. And if you follow this method, if you follow this process that I've listed here, I'm sure that you're gonna be able to work through these injuries and be able to get towards handstand mastery. If I can do it, it from age 35 to age 45, and I was, I mean, my body just really wasn't capable of doing handstands when I started. But if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it. And if you wanna learn about how to incorporate hanging into your workouts, like I talked about before, then click or tap the screen there to watch that video. That's gonna give you some really, really good information. Hit me up if you've got any questions, just put them in the comments and share this video with anyone else that you think might benefit from it. And I'll see you in that next video.